I'm a fan of stealth games like Looking Glass Studios' classic Thief series. I've also been playing the fan-made spiritual successor, The Dark Mod, recently. Hiding in the shadows and avoiding brightly lit areas is a core mechanic in these games. I always wondered how these games detected whether you are in light or in shadow. Turns out that creating a light detection system similar to these games is very simple in the Godot engine. While the technique should work in Godot 3, I'll be working with Godot 4 for this one. Let's get to it. To start, I looked into how the light detection works in both the original Thief games and in the more modern The Dark Mod. This is what I found. Thief 1 and 2 feature baked static lighting. When creating the maps, the editor tools generate light map textures covering all the surfaces of the level. During gameplay, a ray is cast at the floor beneath the player's feet and the brightness of the light map texture at that position is checked. The main issue with this approach is that it doesn't work if no light map textures are used and all lighting is dynamic. The dark mod features fully dynamic lighting and it provides an example of how to detect light levels in this type of game. The game uses a separate camera that captures an image of an octahedron at the player's position from above and below, then calculates the brightness of those images to determine how well lit the player's position is. The benefit of this approach is that no matter how the game's lighting changes, the light level will always match what the player visually sees, as it uses the same rendering pipeline. There is some performance cost to rendering multiple camera views. The light level can be calculated periodically and the results interpolated for optimization. There is one other approach using ray casting. You do ray casts from nearby light sources to check which have a line aside to the player and how far they are. The issue with the raycast approach is that it's difficult to make it match the actual lighting in the game. Transparent textures, other sources of light like global illumination, and mismatched collision and rendering meshes would all have to be manually accounted for. The approach I'm going to show you is similar to the one in the dark mod, since it's very flexible and simple to set up. Here's a thief inspired level I'm going to be using. I have some basic geometry made using CSG nodes a night environment, a few torches, and a bright spotlight in the middle. I'm also using the nice new volumetric fog in Godot 4, the materials I made using Material Maker. Let's go over my player setup. My player scene is a character body 3D with a capsule collision shape 3D and a camera 3D with an eye level view. The script is based on the included script template for character body 3D. I've added the logic for mouse look using these bits of code in the ready, process, and input functions. I also made new input actions for the controls. This isn't a tutorial on first-person controllers, so I'm just quickly showing this. Now to the light detection part of the player. I have a sub-viewport node, and inside that a node 3D containing a camera. This is where the light detecting camera and optionally any meshes you want to use go. You can use render layers to control what meshes render on each camera. Every viewport automatically renders using the first child camera it has, so the main viewport of my game will be using the player's first person camera, and the sub viewport will be using the light detection camera. I added these three control nodes just to visualize the different parts of the light detection process. Inside the player script, the main light detection logic is inside the process function. Every frame I update the global position of the light detection node 3D to match the player's global position. I get the viewport texture rendered on the sub-viewport and displayed on the texture rect. I calculate the average color of the viewport texture using a new method. This method converts the texture to an image, resizes that image to one by one pixel, and then reads the color of that one pixel as the average result. I'm using the slowest and highest quality interpolation mode for the resizing, but that probably isn't necessary. Now that I have the average color, I'm using that on the color rect and using the luminous value of that color to drive the light level meter. This luminous value is what you would use as the level of light for your game's stealth system. One additional thing I'm doing with this method is setting the sub-viewport to render using the debug draw mode for displaying lighting only. That's done with this line in the ready function. 
This is the same lighting only mode available in the editor. Here are the results. You can see in the lower right corner what the light detection camera is seeing, in the lower left corner what the average color is, and in the lower middle an example of how a UI element might display the light level. This simple version of the light detection works fine in this scene, where I'm mostly concerned about the light level on the ground beneath the player. To take this further, you could use two viewports and two cameras with an octahedron to replicate the dark mode system. To optimize this, you might want to make the light detection happen periodically with a timer, instead of every single frame. You could interpolate the periodic results over time to have a smooth animation in your light level meter. You could also try lowering the resolution and quality settings of the sub-viewport, if performance becomes an issue. This video showed a basic implementation of this light detection technique, but hopefully you found it helpful and know where to go from here if you want to build something a bit more advanced. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Please like the video and subscribe to support us in making more content like this, and thank you for watching.